Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over data link for the Viper. So first I'll show you how to set it up in the mission editor. First thing you need is GPS. The reason why is because the data link in the Viper uses certain timing signals and it gets them from GPS. Now I think technically there is a way to do it without GPS where you can have one Viper generate the timing signals and send them to all the other ones. However, I'm not sure if that is actually modeled in DCS. The manual mentioned it but didn't really explain it that much. However, in DCS, 99% of the time, and pretty much on all multiplayer servers, you're just going to be using GPS for the timing signals because that's how it's set up by default. So you need your mission to have GPS. For GPS, there's two requirements. The first requirement is that the mission takes place during or after March 28, 1994. If you want to set the time in your mission, you can click the cloud button and you can adjust the date right here. As you can see right now, it's 2016. That's definitely good for GPS. The other requirement is you need USA on your team. If you click this button, you can see the teams. As you can see, I have USA on blue team. The plane you're flying in doesn't need to be part of USA. If there's another country on blue team and your plane is part of that country, that's fine. It's just you need USA to be on your team. The only way you can get around that is by clicking customize mission options and enforce unrestricted sat nav and then enable it. And that will allow everyone in the mission to have access to GPS regardless of whether or not USA is on their team. So that's how you set up GPS. Now let's go over how to actually set up data link. If you click on your Viper, if you click on the blue tab, you can see there are some data link options and there are some more if you click on the pink tab. For the options in the blue tab, you have voice call sign and voice call sign number and STN number. You shouldn't need to adjust these. They should be set up by default when you put the plane down in the mission. The voice call sign is usually automatically set up based on your call sign here. So you can see my call sign is Uzi. So my voice call sign is UI. And your call sign number is usually based on your position in the flight. So here my call sign is Uzi 11. So as you can see, it automatically set my call sign number to 11. And the STN number is an ID number, which the data link system uses. Every plane has a separate ID number. But once again, you shouldn't need to adjust any of these because as you put plane downs in the mission editor, it should set them up correctly. And by the way, if you want, you can also adjust these in cockpit, but you shouldn't need to do that. Okay, next, the pink button. This is where you're going to actually be setting up data link. You can see there's two tabs, settings and network. In the settings tab, you don't need to worry about this. In fact, for most of the options, it doesn't even let you you choose anything. The only thing you can even adjust in the settings tab is the transmit power. I'm not sure how exactly transmit power is modeled in DCS. I would just leave it to whatever the default setting is. The thing you're going to be actually messing with is the network tab. So here you can set your flight members and team members and here you can set your donors. So for the flight members and team members section you can have eight planes, four flight members and four team members. And in the donors section you can have four donors. The difference is that flight members, team members and donors can share different kinds of information. Flight members, which are the first four people here, can share the most amount of information. Team members can share a little bit less information than flight members, and the donors down here can share the least amount of information. According to the manual, flight members can share PPLI, which is just where their position is. They can share air targets, mark points, seed targets, and you can use them for TDOA attacks, which has to do with the harm targeting system. It says team members can share the same things that flight members can. The only difference is that team members will not show lock lines. So what that means is that if a flight member shares something, if they have something locked up, there will be a line coming out of their plane so you can see which person in your flight is looking at what. So team members can share all the same stuff. It just doesn't show lock lines for team members. And then for donors, it says donors can share all the same things. It's just donors cannot share seed targets and donors cannot be selected for the TDOA system, which is the harm targeting system. Another thing I want to mention is that in the Viper, you can adjust your flight and team members in the cockpit, but you cannot adjust your donors in the cockpit. So once you set your donors in the mission editor, that is how they will be for the rest of the mission. Now, one thing that's important to know is that you are also one of the planes here. As you can see, my first person here that was automatically filled in as a flight member is Ariel12, and that is actually me. And as you can see, you obviously you cannot delete yourself from the data link. So in order to set a flight member or team member, all you do is go to another plane. For example, here's another Viper, I want to be a donor. You look at their pilot name here, which is Ariel13, and you click on your Viper, go to the data link tab, and I have them here already, so I'm gonna delete them. 
But since I want to set them as a donor, I go to TNDL donors here. I go to unit and I do aerial one, three and click add. And now this Viper is a donor. For flight members and team members, it's the same process. Let's say I want to have this Hornet here as a flight member. As you can see, his pilot is aerial two, one. So I'm going to go back to my plane, go to the pink tab, and I already have him added. So I'm just going to delete him here. I'm going to go to units, aerial two, one and click add. I've been adding individual planes, but if you want to add a whole group, you can have the group option here. You'll also notice this thing that says TDOA. TDOA has to do with the harm targeting pod system. Basically, if you have multiple Vipers that all have harm targeting pods, if the other Vipers are part of your TDOA, then you can use them to get a more accurate location of a SAM site. So you can adjust the TDOA in the cockpit, or you can just set it here. In this case, it wouldn't make sense because Aerial 2-1 here is a Hornet. This functionality is only for other Vipers. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you how to do the TDOA system because I'm going to have that in my harm targeting system video. Last thing to mention when it comes to setting things up in the mission editor is that first of all, if you place down another plane that has access to data links such as the A-10, even if you don't add them as a flight member or a team member or a donor, they will still show up on your data link. You'll see their position. It's just they can't share any information. The other thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to AWACS like this E2 here. AWACS do not need to be added as donors or team members. They will automatically give information to you no matter what. That was the setup for the mission editor. Now let's go into the cockpit. Let's go over how to turn on the GPS. The way you turn it on is with this switch back here that says mids LVT. You just set it to the on position. Once you turn on the mids, if you go to the list button and click E, for data link, you can see the data link page. You need to make sure GPS time is on. That way you're getting the proper timing signals for data link. It should be on by default, but just in case, make sure it's on. There's also this thing that says NTR. You need to make sure NTR is off, which it also should be by default. Now, NTR is network time reference, and I might be wrong, but my understanding of what it is, is that if you wanted, you could turn off GPS time by just clicking any number here and then you could turn on NTR. And I think what that's supposed to do is have your plane generate time signals and send them to other Vipers. So then you don't need GPS time signals, but I might be wrong about that. But in DCS, you shouldn't need to do that anyways. In 99% of missions and pretty much all multiplayer missions, you're just always using GPS time. So just make sure NTR is off and GPS time is on. Now in the GPS page, you can click sequence and here are some of the settings that we saw earlier in the mission editor. These here are fighter channel, mission channel, and special channel. These were those settings that we couldn't adjust, so I would just leave these as default. And then these were the other settings we saw. You can see the transmit power, so you shouldn't need to mess with anything on this first page. And if you click sequence again, you go to the last GPS page, and this is more stuff we saw in the mission editor. One through four are people in the flight, and five through eight are people in your team. And and these are the STN numbers. So all you do is you can cycle down and you can type in the STN number for each position. And as you can see, I can also highlight this here. If you click any number, it shows a T, which is for the TDOA. So that sets them as your part of your TDOA sub team, which is for the harm targeting system. But once again, I'm not going to go over that in this video. And this here shows your position in the flight. So remember that in the data link, panel here, you are also one of the numbers here. So this is just showing that I am position number one and you can change it if you want. So for example, if I was actually number two here, I could change it to two and click enter. That was how to set up the data link. Now let's see what it looks like. Data link symbols show up in two places in the Viper. They show up on your HSD and also on your radar. First, let's look at the HSD. As you can see, if there is a green circle here, that is a PPLI, which is a position of a friendly. Even if someone is not a flight member or donor, you will still see their position on the data link. For example, I have an A-10 out here who is not part of my donors or flight members, yet I can still see his position. This is the AWACS over here. And also you'll notice that some friendlies on your data link will be blue and some will be green. If somebody is green, that means they are either a donor or they are just, or they are just a friendly connected to the data link system. If someone is blue, they are either a team member or a flight member. This was the Hornet that I had set as a flight member. And as you can see, he shows up blue on my data link. Also, people in your team and flight will have a number. As you can see, this Hornet has a two because he is positioned two in the flight. Also, 
you might notice that some of them have a dot inside. If you see someone with a dot inside, that means they are set as a donor, which was this viper right here. Also, you'll notice that some of the symbols on the data link will be hollow and some will be filled in. If they are hollow, like this one, that means that you see them on data link, but your radar does not see them. But if they are filled in, like these other three, that means that you see them on data link and also on your own radar. Now I put down some targets in the mission. On your data link, Friendlies will show up as a green circle, Hostiles will show up as a red triangle, and Unknown and Suspect will show up as a square. Unknown will be a white square, and Suspect will be a yellow square. And just like with the other symbols, the filled in ones are ones that I also see on my radar. As you can see, these two squares in the front are filled in, which means I can also see them on the radar. However, these three in the back are hollow because my radar does not see them, I'm only picking them up through data link. As as you can see, there is a line coming out of the blue circle here. Remember, lines only come out of flight members. This Hornet has a line going towards this guy, which means he has him set as his launch and steer, which means he is currently locked onto or targeting or engaging this data link target. On your HSD, if you click control and you click this to go to page two, you can adjust some of the symbols you see from data link. Now the manual said most of these options are not modeled. However, air surveillance is modeled if you unselect it then it, as you can see it takes away a lot of stuff. Air surveillance allows you to see things that an AWACS is sharing with you. So as you can see if I enable air surveillance all these things are stuff that I'm getting from AWACS. And you can also press SAM to enable seeing SAM sites that are pre-planned or shared with Datalink. And you can also press this to enable or disable air targets that are shared with you from other jets. Now let's look at the radar. As you can see all these symbols on the radar are pretty much the same. You can bind these two switches IFF in and out. If you press IFF out it will toggle the data link symbols. You can also press IFF in to cycle through friendly data link symbols. On the bottom left you can see right now it's showing all friendly symbols but if I click IFF in it says FTR plus. This removes all friendly symbols that I'm getting from AWACS and if you press it again it'll just say targets which will remove all friendly symbols so you only see hostiles. Those were air targets on data link you can also share ground targets. If you want to share a ground target, you need to use this button here. If you click it, it goes to SMDL, which is currently not modeled in DCS. So make sure you have it set to TNDL. You're going to need the IFF in switch. And what you do is hold the IFF in switch and this will light up, which means it's sending information to other planes. Now, when it comes to what you actually transmit, I'm not sure exactly how it works. The manual didn't explain it very in-depth and I haven't really used it much myself but I think the way it works is that it's based on what sensor you're using for example if you're using your targeting pod and you have something locked up then when you transmit it will transmit where the targeting pod is looking and I think that if you have your HSD once again, I'm not completely sure. I haven't used that feature very much myself, but I think that's the way it works. Now, when you receive a ground target from someone on your data link, you are going to get a message on your HUD. It's going to say what waypoint it is filled into. Now, if you want to get rid of that warning on your HUD, you can just press the warning reset, but basically it's going to fill in one of your waypoints. It will show up as a mark point on your HSD. There will be a little cross and one of of your and your flight member will have a line connecting them to the cross. There is a database and I'll put a picture up on the screen that shows what waypoints are supposed to go where. Data link waypoints are supposed to be filled in from 26 to 30 or 100 to 127. However, the manual mentioned that the way it works in DCS right now is that they will currently be filled in starting from 500. And I think that's the way it will be until they refine how it works in DCS. So as far as I understand right now, when someone sends you a ground target on data link, it will start from waypoint 500 and then it will fill in after that. Like I mentioned, it will show up on your HSD as an X, which is a mark point symbol. On your HSD, as you can see, I have a waypoint here and you can hover over it and do TMS up to lock it. 
You can do that with mark point symbols too. So if a flight member sends you a ground target on data link, you'll see the little cross there and you can put your cursor over it and press TMS up and it will select that to fly to and your sensors should automatically look at it. Last data link feature is PDLT or primary data link track. This is a really useful feature. If you set your HSD as the sensor of interest and you hover over a data link symbol, if you press TMS up, as you can see, it puts an octagon around the symbol. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna do this one instead. Just do TMS up, and there it puts an octagon. And if you have your helmet mounted display turned on, you can see it on your helmet mounted display. As you can see, there is that octagon out there. And you'll also have a dotted line coming out of your cross on your HUD. If you want to get rid of it, you can just press TMS aft and it will drop it. That was Data Link and the Viper. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.